And so today I felt like highlighting another kind of underappreciated, perhaps undervalued collectible pistol from the World War II era uh, that a lot of beginning collectors could get into for not a ton of money. And ammo is still available. It's not so rare that you're going to have to become a reloader or dig around for some sort of ammo that's so rare that it's a collector's item in and of itself. This pistol is actually also associated with World War II Germany, which kind of tends to have the most particularly um, overvalued, perhaps, collectibles. Uh, even though a lot of like German stuff was produced by the millions, it still tends to command very high prices. That's not really the case with this guy. So what this is, is a CZ VZ27. Uh, this, as the name implies, is actually a Czechoslovak design that was introduced in the 1920s, 1927, and production continued for nearly 25 years, up until uh, 1951, from what I gather. Uh, something like 650,000 would end up being produced, and about two-thirds of that was actually under German occupation during World War II. Uh, this is one such example, hence the, uh, the German markings. Let me see if I can show you some more of those and hopefully get them to focus. But we can see that here. Uh, there's also a Waffenamt right over here. I don't know how well that's going to show up. I'll try to get it to focus. Um, maybe I'll just have to take my word that it's there. And we also see uh, another mark of such on the uh, the barrel right there. So in any case, these are chambered in 32 auto, as I said. So that makes them relatively available as far as, as if you want to shoot these guns. They're very pleasant shooting, by the way. It feeds from a single stack magazine. I'm not 100% sure on capacity whether it's 7 or 8. I can get eight, ma uh, 8 rounds into this mag, but then the magazine won't fully go in. So I'm thinking it's a 7 round magazine. It is, of course, straight blowback operated. There's no locking system, but it's actually quite a hefty little pistol. And so, as such, the recoil is really very minimal. It's basically like shooting a 22. Very pleasant gun to shoot. It's not terribly uncomfortable, even though it looks kind of strange and ungainly. Uh, it's it's really a very pleasant pistol to shoot. I think one of, one of the nicer 32s that I've ever fired, other than maybe like a Colt 1903. Uh, in terms of design, it does have some kind of unusual features, at least by the standards of today. For example, it does have a, a you know slide lock on an empty magazine, as you can see here, but really only sort of. This isn't a true slide lock. It's held open by the magazine follower, and as soon as you remove the magazine, it slams shut, just like so. So that does kind of keep you from dry firing at least, but of course a, a true slide lock would have been preferable and they did exist in other designs, so I don't know why they didn't uh, go that route, but again, it, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Uh, it also has a uh, magazine disconnect safety, so without a magazine, it is a hammer-fired pistol, by the way, uh, but nothing will happen. It also has a mechanical safety. The spring on mine doesn't quite hold. The way it would ordinarily work is uh, this uh, flipping this lever down would lock it in safe, and pushing this button would release it, but the spring is basically... Um, worked its way you know loose or bent or something like that over the years and so it doesn't stay on safe it just springs back up automatically so mine doesn't really have mechanical safety but uh i think replacing that spring will, would do the trick uh, but in any case really cool very interesting pistol uh these saw from what i gather quite a bit of use on the eastern front and also kind of with a lot of sort of rear line units i've seen an example where uh you know the infamous uh Kolditz pow camp uh Apparently, at least some of the guards were armed with these that, were, that ended up being confiscated from them after the war. So, very historically interesting design, very cool, uh, very pleasant, very comfortable to shoot pistol. You can still get ammo for them, and they're not terribly expensive. For this particular example, and like I said, really the only major issue with it was this uh, safety, and I don't even know if the seller knew about it, but I paid in the high 400s for this, and I, I routinely see them kind of more like in the 500s, perhaps they're, you know in a slightly nicer condition, although this one's really not in bad shape either, as you can see for what it is. So I think this is definitely one that is really kind of unsung, underappreciated, uh, a very cool pistol. And if you're kind of looking to get started without spending, you know, $1,800 on something, uh, this is definitely a good way to go. Definitely keep an eye out uh, if, you, if you spot one of these at a, you know, gun store, gun show, something like that. They're not coming into the country, at least at this time, as far as on the primary market. I don't know, maybe there's some in Ethiopia left to be found. Kind of doubt it, but who knows. Uh, nonetheless, I just figured I'd kind of share this uh, interesting little pistol, and uh, that's really it. Thank you for watching, as always.